Hey guys, welcome to Traditional Bow Hunting Wilderness Podcast. This is Jason Sam Kovac. Today we're going to talk about my broadheads that I'm going to be shooting this year and why I shoot them. And uh, some things have changed for the first time in a long time for me, yet I'm not giving up my traditional, you know, the way I've always done it here. But um, the Magnus 1 2 blade broadhead, okay, that's what this is right here. Magnus 1 2 blade broadhead. Here is one for you right here to see, but this head that you're seeing right there, I have taken over a hundred animals with this head. This thing has killed all kinds of things. Uh, tons of pigs, it's killed uh, a bunch of, it's killed caribou, black bear, white tails, uh, I'm pr uh, probably other stuff too. It's, it's killed a lot of animals with this, with this head. Um, and uh, it's always served me very well. Now originally that needle point that's on there was a pain in the butt and I'd get one to curl. I missed one time shooting at a caribou I missed and that arrow curled um, and that tip curled on there once and then uh, um, I had another time where I ended up hitting a shoulder on the opposite side and curled that tip. So I started doing that tonneau point tip on them with my grinder many years ago but this head has been the best head there I've ever had. So what I did is when they uh, quit making these I had probably, I don't know, maybe four, four dozen or five dozen of them. Well, I scoured up every one that I could find, and I have over 250 of these heads. I love this head. Best head I've ever used. And uh, it's been tried and true. As a matter of fact, I just took this off the wall from behind the camera. But this is a pig. This is a mount that I did myself. Um, but this is a pig that I killed. That is the broadhead that killed this pig. And it's a Magnus 1 on there. And you can see on here that it was from 521 2000, uh, in 2000. So, I mean, we're talking 20 years of using exclusively that head. So, this head has served me very well. Um, always has. Always been good. Um, and I love it. And I love this shape. See, what you gain from this is you're getting that wide cut, all right? So I'm getting two blades, so I'm getting great penetration, very easy to sharpen without having to deal with three blades or bleeder blades, and I get that good wide cut, which leaves a heck of a blood trail, and I can fit six of them in my quiver. This is my Great Northern Quiver right here, and I have six arrows in that quiver right there. Okay, I use a piggybacker system right here. I use a piggybacker on there, but I put six heads, as you can see in the foam of that. I'll get it where it's centered out here for you. But uh, yeah, like that. You can see that I have six broadhead slots in that foam, and I can do that because they're two blade. If I did that with three blades or anything like that, or bleeders, I can't fit six arrows into this five arrow quiver. Um, and, uh, and like I said, ease of sharpen, ease of uh, packing them, pack abilities, taking these in my, you know, if I want to take an extra one and stick it in my pack, I can do that. If I want to stick another one in here, I actually have a slot in there to make it a six and a half arrow quiver. I've done videos on that. So for me, that uh, two blades is important. But I want a wide two blade. I want something with some snap to it and some punch that's going to really open that thing up. These do an incredible job. Never once in 100, like I said, over 100 animals have I ever been disappointed with a blood trail from this broadhead. Never. Not one time ever. So I refuse for all these years, 20 something years, to go to any other broadhead that's out there. So I bought all of those ones that I found. And uh, the single bevel thing, that revolution came in eight, ten years ago or whatever it is, people really like them. Um, but all the single bevels that were on the market were a narrow three to one type ratio head, which understandably, it's an incredible head and does a great job. I don't want one of those heads. I want a wide cut head. It's my personal preference. Maybe if I go hunt Cape Buffalo or something like that, I'll switch to like a tough head or something that's a three to one ratio head. But um, <coughs> I want that wide two blade broadhead. It's just my preference, okay? It's what I like. And so that's what I'm going to be using. That's what I'm going to be, this is my staple here. This is my base. My, my baseline, my foundation is that Magnus head. Now, there's a couple others that have come out. First, we have a prototype head that I did a video review on. This is a prototype head from Jason at Tough Head. You can see it right there. It is a one and a half inch wide, and uh, I did a review on the specs on this, but it is single bevel too. So that is going to be pretty impressive. When you look at the thickness of the blades on these things, I mean, that is where you at center here. Should be good right in there, but look at the thickness of the blades difference on that. I mean, that's just crazy how um, how that really is. I mean, it's, that head is just insane. Um, so I have that one, and I got that to shoot. Now, 
The problem with this one for me, now I do have the arrow actually for this, so it's not on here right now. I just stuck these on my practice arrows. I have arrows, these are going in, it'll be hunting ones, but these were just practice ones as I was sharpening them up. But uh, the problem is this is a right bevel head. I'm a left wing feather. See, my feathers are actually a left wing feather is what I shoot. And I shoot that on purpose. Now I'm a left handed shooter. So a lot of people say, well you should shoot right handed so that it twists away from the bow as I draw and it shoots, it goes away from the bow. Trust me very carefully when I tell you the fact that your arrow will not start spinning until it's past the bow anyway. Okay, doesn't matter if you shoot right or left at all. But what, you know, here's the riser, that arrow is, it's on the string till right here. You know, the, the string is still in that string groove till it gets to right here by your riser. It's not going to start spinning. Okay, so it's kind of irrelevant, doesn't make any difference. So I thought, okay, well, you know, it's a right bevel head. I'll make a right bevel or right fletched arrow. And uh, the problem I'm having with that is because of the fact that I do shoot with a left fletch, with the left wing fletch on this. Let me see actually where you'll be able to see this at if I come in here. But with this, if you look at the feather design on here, again, this thing's kind of, everything's always in my way. Hold on. But if you look at the design of that, you're going to see that that curls down for me. The back of the feather curls down. So if this is my cock feather here, as I draw this back, this part of the feather curls under my nose. So if I set her out here where you'll see me, but if I draw that back, that goes right under my nose. See how that feather is perfectly under there? It just, I bring it back, I draw it, and that feather goes right under my nose, and it doesn't bother me at all. If I were to make that a right wing, the feather now, instead of curling down in the back, it curls up in the back for the right wing. So what that does is that puts that up higher. And then so when it's actually leveled out like it should be, that back end comes back. I'll try and hold it. comes back and goes right into my nose. Right here like that. I cannot stand it. Um, so I draw and it's just boom and it's hitting my nose and it distracts me. So I'm not shooting right wing feathers. Not, not even attempting it. Not interested. I do have one arrow that this head will go on so that it matches the bevel. I will try to struggle through it but I do not like it. I like that where when I draw that, that is tucked under my nose and out of the way not coming into my nose. I cannot stand that. Um, it bugs me very badly. Um, so that, that kind of being a bummer that it's, but it's a prototype head. These aren't even going to be out for a couple of years, um, you know, a year or two before these are out. So I, I'm, I'm going to use that right wing feather for this arrow. It's the only one of these I have, but it's a pretty amazing head in the fact that it is the same as my Magnus One head but with a single bevel design, which is going to be pretty impressive. I want to try that single bevel so it combines the best of both worlds. Well, so I'm going to be using those. Well, I only have this one of Jason's from Tough Head, and I'm excited to use it, but I only have one, knowing that it's a year and a half to two years before these are even available um, for me to even use, uh, that creates kind of, a, kind of an issue for me to be able to play with just this one. Uh, and somebody had told me, I can't remember who it was, I'd have to look, but he said, A. Boyer makes one of those as well too. So I said, okay. So now you have the same kind of thing. Here's my Magnus head right here. Get him where you can see him here. But that is my Magnus head, and that is the A. Boyer one and a half inch wide bone, it's called their large bone head, but in a single bevel and also in a left bevel. So these, this will work perfectly with my, um, with my feathers. So when I bring this back and I draw in that feathers under my nose and out of the way and I can shoot and I have that, um, so I get that benefit here. It's very similar to the one, the design of Jason's. Now, I don't know all the behind the scenes stuff. I know his is pinned with roll pins. This one looks welded. I know this is 0.72 thick. I can't remember what this one is, but I have it in the uh, video I did on it. But, um, so there's a few differences here, but they're very, very similar with the exception that again, as of right now, the one from Tough Head is a single prototype and it actually spins the wrong way that I'm used to. Whereas these A Boyers are available right now and I can get three of them and they are uh, left bevel like I'm shooting. So these are going to be the three basic broadheads that I'm going to be using this year. My, my foundation of the Magnus, that tough head from Jason that's going to be a, that prototype one that I will use. That's the one I'm going to use first. I'm going to use this prototype uh, so I can give him feedback on that. That's my intention. And then I have that... Um, you know, that uh, A. Boyer uh, large bonehead, which one thing that's neat to notice on here, when you look at these three, okay, if you look at the bottoms of them, 
Okay, this one is a solid bottom. This one is a solid bottom, and that uh, that A Boyer has actually got it. it it's, it's actually sharpened, uh, you know, a sharp, a false edge on there on the back. Now you can sharpen it. It's not actually real sharp, but it gives you that option on there for. It's, it's already preset if you wanted to sharpen it. That's kind of a cool feature. Um, but all heads are, all these heads are, as you can tell, very, very similar, almost identical, with the exception of having single bevels on them. Now the these all are coming in at about the same weight my magnus one is coming in at 239 grains with my with a 100 grain steel insert in it the head from jason is coming in at 250 so you got a 10 grain difference there basically and this one's coming in at 244 it's a 200 grain head now i think they call it a 200 i saw on their website but when i got these they were 200 and these are 200 grains but what i did here i had a dilemma so what do i do i had to try to keep all of these broadheads the same weight so again i'm not changing arrows or anything and i don't want to be off so i actually have the downside to it is like on my magnus here i use a steel insert that's a hundred grain steel insert that's actually inside of there that adapter that's in there is a hundred grain steel adapter on the um on this one on that A Boyer, I had to go with an aluminum. So 42 grain aluminum one in there, um, which, you know, I mean, I like the strength of the steel. I had a couple decisions to try to make, so I want to keep the weight the same. So I, I had, to, I didn't want to go over 50 grains. I had a 75 grain little steel one, or a 42 grain aluminum one, um, and I thought to myself, well, okay, this one is 100% hollow throughout there. There's nothing in this. It's not like my full-size ones where they're stiffer. This one is 100% hollow in, inside of there. This one is only hollow for, you know, till about right there. And then it's solid aluminum all the way through there. I'm looking at it going, I don't know which one's going to be stronger, tougher. I don't know, but this would still put me overweight. So it is what it is, and I went with aluminum. So I'm going to shoot this on an aluminum, uh, aluminum adapter in there which gives me 244 grains total um, so it's putting all these between 240 and two between 240 and 250 grains which is what I would consider acceptable and not going to modify or change anything now depending on what Jason's final version this is prototype B he's on like prototype prototype like X M Y Z he's somewhere down the line but depending on what that comes in at depending on what these are, depending on what things are when these things start popping up and, and being more readily available and I start making more arrows, I'll start figuring out that configuration on how to be able to use a, not a mini, I do not want this. I do not like this little 75 grain steel insert. Doesn't interest me being that small and hollow, but I like the steel, the steel full size ones that are this size. Those are what I use, but that's all stainless. It's made out of steel. That's what I want to run in that head. So I will have to build the arrows to accommodate that. Right now, this is how we're going to run it and what we're going to do with it. Now, a couple neat things that I've noticed on here now. Again, I've never killed an animal with a single bevel. But one thing I do notice for sure is that when I shoot these, because I these have both the the one from Tough Hat and A Boyer, I have shot you know 30, 40 times with these into my broadhead targets that I or my uh, 3D targets out there, uh, and uh, the Tough Hat one goes in and out pretty smooth. This one with that. Uh, you know, with that false edge on the back, she's pretty tough on a target. She definitely grabs a lot and pulls out of there pretty well. Um, takes stuff out, but they uh, um, so they've been shot a lot. And what I notice is pretty interesting is you do get a twist when you shoot them. I'll put a little video down in here somewhere right here. All right, that's that A Boyer head. Now, what I want to see with that is I want to see the twist rate as I pull that out because this is a left bevel twist. So it's going this way around as it comes in. It's turning and twisting that way. When I back this out, I mean, that cut is huge. It's there. And I can already see the S turn into there, the S cut shape of that. But when I back out, I want to watch these feathers. So we are basically indexed straight down, cock feather straight down. So as I pull it out, I want to see if it's going to twist back. Because again, it's going in and twisting this way as it goes in. When we pull it out, I can feel it twist out. I want to see where that cock feather ends up. So as we pull this out, I can feel that twist right there and that lines up so we got almost quarter turn 
which would be about, so there's our way in, there's where we ended up at. That's pretty impressive for only getting, I mean, we didn't get, we, we didn't get that far that much penetration and that's a, you know, almost a quarter turn, you know, or a, uh, you know, eighth of a turn on just barely, you know, that much penetration. This target's not that wide. We didn't go all the way through. So we didn't get, yeah, we didn't get that much penetration and yet we got twist from there to there, that much twist in that. That's pretty impressive. I'm pretty stoked. That's pretty exciting. Here where you can see me pulling an arrow out of the target. You can watch it happen. But so, I mean, even in, in penetration in a bear of this much, that much penetration. So you're talking literally, you know, that much penetration. It was basically, if you watch those fletchings, it was a turn. So it was cock feather down. So the turn about like this. You know, that much turn. So on the broadheads, it was almost a quarter turn, you know, a quarter percent of a turn like this that went that what much on a broadhead for this thing to basically, as it's spinning towards the target, like this, and then it goes in, boom, hits the target, it would still turn that much like that inside of that 3D target. That's pretty impressive. And even on the target, you can see that you can actually see the S shape on entrance. Um, so that is something kind of cool. So I'm really excited to see what they'll actually do. Because when I shoot these, I shoot broadheads at my 3D targets all the time. These just go straight in. And then when you pull it out, you feel it just pull straight out. When you go to pull one of these out of there, it goes in. And then when you pull it out, you can feel it twist its way out. It follows, its, it traces its line back out. It's pretty neat to see what they do. So I'm incredibly excited to shoot um, some animals with these single bevels and really see what they're capable of. Now when it comes to sharpening them, okay, we have different steels here. I don't know what steel A. Boyer uses in theirs. I know it's a 52 or 53 Rockwell. I know that uh, Jason's got this up about 60 uh, Rockwell on these. I don't know what the Magnuses are. This is actually a CMP3 V steel in his prototype he gave me. This, this in a titanium ferrule, like I said, I did a video on it. Great head. Um, but now here's the interesting part. Two single bevels. I have never sharpened single bevels before except for a tough head that Jason sent me uh, just for the heck of it to do a demo I did on a direct bond system and I sharpened it to see if I could. It was pretty easy, okay? I wasn't concerned, but that was the only time I did it. Well, with these, I have shot these and then I have resharpened them and then I've shot them more and I've resharpened them again and I will say hands down that the single bevels are actually easier to sharpen than a double bevel. I mean, these things are scary, razor sharp. And I mean, like even this one right here, you know, I just got done doing it, but I'm talking, where are you at on here where you can see, but I mean, we're we're talking peeling, I mean, just shaving sharp. I mean, that's just, there's nothing left. It just takes it, these heads are insane. And uh, I think the reason for it, that they sharpen so easy is because when you're sharpening a double one, and I don't, I should have actually brought a rod out here to show you, but when you're sharpening with a file or whatever you're doing, you're sharpening this side on a file and then a rod, and you're doing this one, and you're going, you got four sides, four angles that you need to try to create. You know, so you got, you know, four on each side, you know, on one blade, you got an angle here and an angle here. And if you get those cockeyed, you're going to notice it. And the same with on the bottoms on the other blade. But you got to, you're fighting as you're sharpening all this to fight with that stuff. On a single bevel, you have this massive bevel that is right on there, right there. That bevel becomes a guide. That's what I noticed. So when I take this and I lay a file on there, I set that file on and I just roll it till it lays flat on that bevel and I file. And then I can take my ceramic rod. I actually did not have to file these. I did file the um, this one because I wanted to make sure I could. So this one's been filed, that one from Jason. Like I said, I tested this a lot. I've shot this a lot. Um, but this one I did not have to file, but I ceramic rotted it and you know after shooting it into my 3D target, but I hit it with ceramic rod and stropped it. But what I noticed is by having that big bevel right there that's on there that you can see on there, that huge bevel, it makes it very easy to lay your rod or file or whatever you are and it just lays flat. You know, just tip it till it lays flat and then work it across there. It's just so super easy. So you get that side going until you have a burr on the other side. The principles of sharpening things do not change between a double bevel or single bevel. So I just keep working that side till I got a burr on this side. Once I got a burr, I flip it over and as you can see on there, ever so slightly, you'll see a little glinting on that edge. That's basically me just hitting it and then taking that burr off. That's all I did. So I only have to really sharpen this side 
and this side. Sharpen two sides, okay? Get that side good and sharp, flip it over, remove that burr, flip it back, hit it again to make sure, and then strop. So it's a much easier process and much faster to sharpen this, these single bevels, than it is the double bevels. I'm also going to mention the reason that you're seeing on this A-Boyer head, that discoloration that you're seeing on the blade, that is from me. I actually, because I mounted this on that aluminum ferrule, ferrule with a uh, uh, torch and hot melt glue. That's how I put it on. So what you're seeing, that discoloration right there, is just from me heating that up with a torch on there. So it's not, you know, they don't come that way. As a matter of fact, one thing, now, when I got my prototype from Jason, it came in a piece of cardboard. This is a prototype. I've never bought tough head broadheads. I've never paid for and bought any. Again, I don't, I've never shot a tough head other than this one, but... That one came in a nice piece of cardboard, but these A Boyers that I bought, um, they, you know, I just went ahead and ordered them. Well, it's pretty neat how they came. They came with these things on here, which I will show you. So this is how the package comes, and they call them Hunt Ready, but you can see that that head has this plastic on here. Now, not only does it have this, it, it, it pops off, it's like a plastic covering. It goes on there and it is reusable so I can take this and stick that head back in there. I already tried with the other one that's why I saved it. I thought those were pretty cool because they'll fit on any one of my broadheads so that's kind of neat. I thought wow that's a nice little bonus there if I want to put one in my pack or throw something in somewhere I can slide them right back in and put it back in there like that so it's kind of neat but they give you it comes this way but they come Razor sharp, so do Jason's from Tough Head. They come razor sharp, but this has got oil. You can see all the oil on the blade right there because they are carbon steel. Um, but uh, but yeah, that's how they come. And, and like I said, that is scary, razor sharp already right out of the package. But I thought that was a nice touch. Um, you know, that they're coming hunt ready and they give you this little uh, little guard here that is right here. It's just kind of, you know, kind of a cool little thing to be able to put that head in there and have that on there like that to have well, look at it look at how sharp that is it actually just cut right this this one's garbage because i just cut right through it but um but that is pretty neat that they ship them to you that way with that little guard on there i thought that was nice but again they come they're razor sharp right out of the package and that's pretty neat setup so anyway that kind of shows you what broadheads i'm using and why but i am a huge fan of a two blade broadhead, a wide cut, one and a half inch wide by about two and three eighths or two and a half inches, just under two and a half inches. But this shape, this style, this Magnus one broadhead that like I said for 20 years has never let me down ever. And, uh, and then for the, you know, if you go back for years, this was the only one and a half inch wide broadhead you could get. Now you have two top tier companies, Tough Head and A Boyer, that are creating these, and I hear there's others in work, but these are in the works too, but I mean, you are talking top shelf broadhead makers putting out the design of the best broadhead, in my opinion, ever created. I'm so excited about that. Like I said, I mean, for years, you couldn't even find one. That's why I bought as many of these as I could from every place I, in, I store them. I keep them in a vault, in a safe, because I don't want anybody near them. Um, you know, they're, they're my favorite head. Well, now these are game changers for me, and I am excited to use them and take some animals. So we're going to see what they do. So there you go. But we got a... Uh, Tough head prototype. We got the new A Boyer design, which is amazing as well. It may not even be new. It's new to me. I haven't looked for broadheads in many years um, because I had all these. And I figured this is all that there is out there in a one and a half inch wide. This is it. I always wanted to try a single bevel, but I'm not giving up my one and a half inch wide head. It's just not happening. I need this. Uh, this is what I want to shoot. And, uh, and then Jason was talking to me about how he was going to do a prototype and he was going to create a one and a half inch wide head. Got me very excited. I'm very excited about that head. Um, and then, uh, but now, like I said, knowing that he's so busy with production of all their heads and everything they do, it's going to be a while. Could be till 2022 before this head hits the market. Well, he already spurred that interest in me. He set that spark. You know, he set that spark that made me go, I want to try a single bevel one and a half inch wide. And well, I have his. I got one. One is good, but I lose a lot of heads. And you know, who, who knows what's going to, I'm not going to, give up a chance at a pig at 22, 23 yards because I'm worried about losing a broadhead. And if it misses that pig and goes into the water in the swamp, it's I'm not going to not take that shot. It's not going to happen. Um, so having only one was kind of a bummer in case something happens. Well, now I also have these A-Boyers. Um, so that's really exciting as well, too, that I have, a, I have four total single bevel broadheads that I'm going to be able to try, and they're all one and a half inch wide. So 
Uh, that's the game plan for me for this year. That's it. But uh, I'll put links down to these things down below for you and uh, so you can see them. But uh, thanks for watching. Be back with more stuff soon. Talk to you later. Bye.